Okay, so let's continue talking about the mandibular nerve. In the previous video, we have talked about the branches from the main trunk and from the anterior division. Now, the branches from the posterior division are the auriculotemporal nerve, lingual, and the inferior alveolar nerve. Let's start by talking about the auriculotemporal nerve. Now, the auriculotemporal nerve arises by two roots, which run backward and encircle the middle meningeal artery and unite to form a single trunk. So, it's arising from two roots, encircling the middle meningeal artery and forming a single trunk. Now, this nerve continues backwards between the neck of the mandible and the spinomandibular ligament above the maxillary artery. So, when we were studying the course of the maxillary artery, we saw that it as well passes between the neck of the mandible and the spinomandibular ligament. So, this nerve continues backwards between the neck of the mandible and the spinomandibular ligament. And behind the neck of the mandible, it turns upwards and ascends on the temple behind the superficial temporal nerves. So let's see it in this diagram. Behind the neck of the mandible, it's ascending upwards. Okay. Now the auricular part of the nerve supplies the skin of the tragus and the upper parts of the pinna and the external acoustic meatus and the tympanic membrane. So it's supplying the upper part of the ear. The rest of it is supplied by the greater auricular nerve and the auricular part of the vagus nerve. Apart from supplying the upper part of the ear, it also goes upwards and gives a temporal part which supplies the skin of the temple. In addition to this, the auricular temporal nerve also supplies the parotid gland, secretomotor and sensory fibers and the temporomandibular joint. So, so far we have seen it's given branches to the tragus, the upper parts of the pinna, external acoustic meatus and the tympanic membrane. It's given temporal branches, secretomotor and sensory fibers to the parotid gland and also fibers to the temporomandibular joint. Moving further to the lingual nerve. Now the lingual nerve is sensory for the anterior two thirds of the tongue and the floor of the mouth. However, as it's approaching this area, it also carries fibers from the corda tympani, which is a branch of the facial nerve or the seventh cranial nerve. This is secretomotor to the submandibular gland and the sublingual salivary gland and gustatory to the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Okay, so although it was carrying any so although it was carrying only sensory fibers to supply to the anterior to third of the tongue, because it receives fibers from the corda tympani, these fibers being secretomotor to the submandibular and the sublingual salivary gland and gustatory to the anterior to third of the tongue, it also performs this function. So we see that it was carrying sensory fibers to the anterior two thirds of the tongue and on its way it also receives secretomotor fibers for the submandibular and the sublingual salivary gland and taste fibers for the anterior two thirds of the tongue. So if we look at its course, we see that it passes inferior anteriorly on the lateral surface of the middle pterygoid muscle where it receives the, as it's coming anterior, uh, inferior anteriorly, it receives the corda tympani nerve from the facial nerve carrying presynaptic parasympathetic fibers and taste fibers. It passes below the margin of the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle and enters the paralingual space. Submandibular branches hang submandibular ganglion below nerve and deliver presynaptic parasympathetic fibers with synapse, some passing to the submandibular gland and some rejoining the lingual nerve to reach the sublingual gland as you can see here. Then cross the submandibular duct laterally and inferiorly to pass into the tongue. Carry sensory fibers from the anterior two thirds and taste fibers via the corda tympani. Finally coming to the important nerve which is the inferior alveolar nerve. It's one of the most important nerves concerned with mandibular nerve blocks. 
okay so the inferior alveolar nerve is the larger terminal branch on the posterior division of the mandibular nerve this one it has three branches not three branches it has three parts in its course okay as it's entering the mandibular foramen it gives the mylohyoid branch and then it as it's proceeding towards the canal it gives branches to supply the lower teeth and the gum and finally the one that i've not added here is the mental nerve okay let's study each of these now in its course it runs vertically downwards lateral to the medial pterygoid and the spinomandibular ligament it enters the mandibular foramen as here it enters the mandibular foramen on the medial surface of the mandible and runs in the mandibular canal. It is accompanied by the inferior alveolar artery. The mylohyoid branch, which is given just before it enters the mandibular foramen, contains all the motor fibers of the posterior division. It pierces the spinomandibular ligament with the mylohyoid artery and runs in the mylohyoid groove and supplies the mylohyoid muscle and the anterior digestive belly. Now to understand this better, I would actually recommend you to watch the video on maxillary artery where I've inserted a lot of images explaining all of these structures in its course. Now while running in the mandibular canal, the inferior alveolar nerve gives branches to supply the lower teeth and the gums. Okay, so after that, it emerges from the mental foramen as the mental nerve and supplies the skin of the chin, the skin and mucous membrane of the lower lips and its incisive branch supplies the labial aspects of the gums of the canine and the incisor teeth. Okay, so let's quickly recap what we have studied so far. We studied that the branches from the posterior division were auriculotemporal, lingual, and inferior alveolar. The auriculotemporal arose from two roots which encircled the middle meningeal artery to form a single trunk. Supplied upper parts of the ear, the temporal part supplied the temple, the skin of the temple. It also sends some secretomotor motor and sensory fibers to the parotid gland and also to the TMJ. The lingual nerve carried sensory fibers to the anterior tooth hole of the tongue but also received taste fibers for the, from the corda tympani branch and also secretomotor to the submandibular and sublingual gland. The inferior alveolar nerve from the mylohyoid branch, it supplied the mylohyoid muscle and the belly of digastric. In the mandibular canal, it supplied the lower teeth and the gums. And the mental nerve supplied the mucous membrane of the lower lip. The incisive branch supplied the labial aspects of the gum and the incisive teeth. And, and the skin of the chin. So with this we finish our discussion on the mandibular nerve. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.